What is up everyone, my name is Abhas, your ProtoPy expert, and welcome to another edition of Ask ProtoPy, where we answer questions that you ask us. Today's question comes from Tushti, who asked us to do a tutorial on cursor trail effects, and also shared this example, so let's take a quick look. And here, on this website, you can see that as I move my mouse pointer, there's this trail following it, and when I stop moving, there's this bubbling animation. Now we'll learn how to do both of these effects, so let's take a look at the finished prototype that we'll be building. Here you can see that as I move my mouse pointer, there's a trail following it, and when I stop moving, there's this bubbling animation. Now some of the techniques used to get this effect are going to be slightly advanced, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this tutorial down into two parts. In part one, we'll just learn how to do the cursor trails, and in part two, we'll learn how to do the bubbling animation. So let's begin with part one. Let's get into our working file, and here you can see there's literally nothing going on except for the oval shape. There's no triggers or anything added yet. Let's start by making this oval follow our mouse pointer. So to do that, we are going to first add a new variable. Let's click on the plus here, and then go ahead and add a variable for this scene. Since we are only going to use this variable in this scene, it's completely okay to make a variable for this scene. Uh, that gives us also the additional advantage of applying a formula directly. We might need it as we go forward. Let's go ahead and rename this to Timer. Now let's go ahead and add our first trigger. This is going to be the Start Trigger. So the Start Trigger comes into effect as soon as the prototype loads. We don't need any interactions or triggers done by the user. Uh, and that's exactly what we want here. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a response. And this is going to be the assign response. The assign response will assign a specified value to any variable we want. In our case, we want to assign to timer. So let's go ahead and select that. And what do we want to assign? We want to just increment the value of timer. So let's make it timer plus 0 0.1. But we want to make this happen infinitely. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and click repeat here. And I'm just going to click on infinite repeat. Now, this is going to keep repeating every 0.2 seconds. So, let's see what this does. And in order to even see what this does, I'm going to go ahead and click the debug icon here next to the variable. This is going to make the variable visible on our artboard. Let's go ahead and click preview. And now you can see every 0.2 seconds, our variable timer is getting incremented by amount of 0.1. For now, I'm also going to increase the speed of this increment. So I'm going to go back to assign and make the interval, let's say, 0.01 seconds. So every 0.01 seconds, the variable timer is going to be incremented by an amount of 0.1. And I'll explain why I made it so fast as we move to our next trigger, which is going to be detect. So let's click on add trigger here, and let's press detect. Detect comes into play as soon as any specified value of a layer changes. So in our case, we're not looking for layer changes, we're just looking for changes to a variable. So now every time there's a change to the timer variable, detect is going to get activated. And the reason why I made the timer variable so fast is so that the detect trigger keeps coming into action every 0.01 seconds, and that's the fastest check that we can do here. Now let's go ahead and add our first response. We want to move the oval, so we're just going to select the move response, select the oval layer, and we want to move it to whatever position our cursor is on at that point of time. And Protopy lets us do this by using a special function. So let's click the function button here to expand the bar and just write the dollar symbol. And then as you start writing mouse, you see mouse X. That's the X value of your mouse cursor on the screen. Let's press OK. And for the Y position, we're going to change it to dollar symbol mouse Y. And then press OK. Now this is going to move the oval layer to whatever our cursor position is, mouse X and mouse Y. Every time there is a change noticed in the timer variable, which is going to be every 0.01 seconds. Let's see what we've done so far. And here you can see the oval is approaching the mouse cursor, but it's a bit slow. But you can see for sure that it's following the cursor. Now the reason it's so slow is because we've added a duration of 0.2, so let's go ahead and press move and then change the duration to 0. 
we can even go the extra mile here and change the motion curve to linear because we don't want the easing at all even if it that happens accidentally let's just go ahead and press preview now so now you can see the cursor and the oval are pretty much aligned 100 percent let's go ahead and make one more change here i'm just going to click the gear icon and change our cursor to arrow and now it looks more like a web interface all right now let's build a trail so what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate this layer by pressing command d a bunch of times now i'm just making a trail with five pieces because i want to illustrate the concept of how you can do this but i would have duplicated this a few more times if i wanted a longer trail now we want the other ovals to also follow and create a trail so let's go ahead and add another move response to the same detect trigger let's add this one to oval 2 since we want a trail there needs to be some sort of delay through some mechanism and that mechanism is going to be we're going to make this not follow our pointer but instead we're going to make it follow the position of the oval before it so let's go ahead and press x here expand the formula bar and press the back quote button which is going to bring up all the layers that you have and select the layer before it which is going to be oval and for the x value we want to make it follow the x position of the layer oval so i'm just going to write dot x and just press enter i'm going to do the same thing for the y position so i'm going to expand the formula bar press the back quote select oval and then press dot and then y and then press enter to save this i'm going to go ahead and duplicate this move response for all the layers so i'm going to go ahead and change this to oval three this one to oval four this one to oval five and this one to oval six and then also update each of their move x values and y values so then for this one it has to be oval two x and y and then for this one it's going to be oval three and then for this one it's going to be oval four and then for this one it's going to be oval five all right let's take a quick look at what we've done so far so press preview and you can see that although the first oval is right there all the other ones are slow to follow this is also a pretty cool effect though uh, so let's make it faster by going ahead here changing the easing to linear because we don't want that kind of motion uh, curve to happen and then change the duration to maybe 0.1 second and let's see what this does so this is still a bit slow although it's still a pretty interesting effect right look at that <laughs> okay i'm gonna go ahead and change it to even smaller so let's make it 0.02 seconds and let's see this is closer to the trail that we saw on the website example now one more thing that happens there is each of these progressively gets smaller the trail so I'm going to go ahead and select the second one and make it a bit smaller in size so I'm just going to subtract four from each of these and then this one becomes 16 and then this one becomes 12 and then this one becomes eight and then finally the final one is just going to be four now the trail is going to progressively get smaller as well so look at that now if you wanted a longer trail we would have had to add more oval pieces and we would have had to uh, create more responses with the same kind of pattern that we're following here and also there are a few more methods that you could use instead of using the timer variable uh, to create the trail but this is the fastest and simplest method if you were to check for the cursor position the whole trail would not follow the cursor as naturally as it does right now however that could also make for an interesting effect and i do encourage you to play around and try that one out as well for now this is it for part one in part two we're going to look at the bubbling animation so i'll see you in the next one